Hi, my name is Sam Allen. I am the founder of conferencemcs.com. I am also a self-confessed design experience, meeting design nerd, and I am thrilled to be joining you, albeit virtually today, pre-recorded as I'm hosting a hybrid event in Switzerland this week. But it's great to be with you today and amongst some of my heroes in design experience. So thanks for letting me be here. Uh, Miguel asked if I would give three tips around hybrid. I've been working with my clients over the last few months on designing more hybrid focused content. So yes, I can give you three tips as quickly as I possibly can. And of course, please do feel free to connect and ask any other questions about the experiences I and my clients have had. It'd be lovely to chat with you. So let's get on with it. Number one tip from me. Audiences are your stakeholders. Forget the word hybrid. Audiences, wherever they may be, need to have an empathy designed experience. You'll be hearing a lot about that, I'm sure, from the likes of Klaus and from uh, Rude today. But design with empathy in mind. If your audience are coming from virtual, where are they coming from? What considerations do you need to think about? What are they thinking? How are they feeling? What time zone might they be in? Recognize those things as important design, but equally important are our, our attendees in the room. Uh, the world has changed on how an event looks and feels now. So make sure that you factored this in, in terms of your design experience. Virtual attendees actually, I think are probably easier We've got that expectation of what a virtual experience can be. Hopefully, we're going to make that more engaging over the coming months and years. But let's remember our in-person stakeholders as well. Where are they if you're running a multi-hub? What considerations? Design with empathy. Number two, have a broadcast mindset when planning your meetings. Yes, the world has evolved. We've changed how we consume content. It doesn't have to be short. It has to be with a broadcast mindset. We are now looking into a camera a lot more than we have ever done before. So go and have a look at the content you enjoy consuming, whether that be Netflix, whether that be live sport, have a look at some of these live events and see how they're running. How can you use that in your conferences and your meetings and your events to A, bring in more revenue and B, engage your participants and your stakeholders wherever they may be? broadcast mindset. Number three, this has come from my clients. So take it from people like you, you are going to need time. Again, something if you've been talking about event design has to be a major factor when you're expecting participants to contribute, not just financially, but also their time, as well as your partners, your exhibitors, your sponsors and stakeholders. Please do not underestimate the amount of time you need. Bring in the right partners to support you on that. There are some great people, probably you're meeting them today. Uh, come and talk to us. We'll certainly connect you with some great people, but use your time wisely. A great event is never, ever designed in a short space of time. So factor this in, look at the resources, bring those partners in, in good time to make sure that we can deliver the experience that your participants expect and you want. That's all from me. It's short and snappy. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I look forward to seeing if I can support you again soon. Take care, keep safe, keep well. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Will Kern from Endless Events here, helloendless.com, and I got three tips for you when it comes to designing amazing experiences for your hybrid events. First of all, don't let your attendees get lost. What does that mean exactly? Well, far too often when we're designing uh, you know, in-person events, uh, we want to allow attendees to kind of like escape and you know get some separate space and things like that. Well, now that we live in a remote world where literally people are answering emails in between sessions in person and they need to get a break to go, but also that we're designing experiences where in-person attendees are meeting with virtual attendees as well, 
We need to make it so the attendee that's in person or even virtual doesn't get lost in that experience. So here's an example. If you're designing an in-person attendee to meet a virtual attendee, don't make it so they have to you know, go walk far away from the event to be able to take a video call with them or a phone call with them, right? Because otherwise what ends up happening is that they end up walking around the corner, they end up falling into their email and all their work they have to do, and then before you know it, they're lost, right? Or worse is they end up heading back to their hotel room Yikes, now they're completely removed. Design an experience where you have co-working spaces, for example, in the middle of the showroom, or in the middle of the exhibit hall, I should say. Um, so then that way, attendees can pop in, do work, but be still in the middle of the event. Design it so you have call booths for attendees to be able to meet virtual attendees, but right on the show floor. So then that way, they don't ever have to leave, right? They don't get lost. All right, next tip that I have for you, is consider designing your event as one single audience. I know this is the biggest debate, whether a hybrid event is two separate events or one single event. Design it where you have one single audience. That means one platform, as many shared experiences as possible, but also design it as much as possible to create interactions between those two audiences. Don't just consider it one single separate event from each other, otherwise, you're gonna create FOMO, and you're gonna create this existence of planning two events rather than having one single audience. Last but not least is think about work event life integration. We talked about how events are now moving to more and more remote scenarios and attendees are now having to work from wherever they are. Well, before when they used to go to a conference, they would say, I'm putting my out of office on, I'll see you guys on Monday but that doesn't exist anymore. They're gonna say, I'm going to a conference, and the boss is gonna say, well, why don't you get on your email? Why don't you hop on this call in between? So what's gonna be happening is that you're gonna have a little bit of work mixed in while attending these different conferences and events. So design your event to allow for that. Design it so there's white space, so then that way, attendees can go out and get work done. Design those co-working spaces, so then that way, they can not have to go all the way back to the hotel room just to pop in for a quick meeting for their one-on-one -on -one or whatever it is with their boss, right? Design so this integration, but then think about your virtual attendees as well, so then that way, they can go walk their dog. They can go get some space. They can get some work done without getting sucked and getting lost outside the entire event. So those are my three tips for you. Again, first of all, allow, don't allow your attendees to get lost. Make experiences as close as possible to the event so they don't get lost. Second of all, consider them one single audience. And third, work-life event balance. That's key. And integration. All right? Have an awesome day. You're beautiful. Hi there, let me share with you my three top tips on experience design for hybrid events in under three minutes. Before we start, you might be wondering, who are you and how come you know so much about this? Well, let me tell you, don't let anybody fool you that hybrid events are something new and exotic. They've been around for more than 10 years. Here's me interviewing a robot delegate at the Fresh Conference, and this was already in 2014 in Copenhagen, where a lot of experimentation was done. And here, back in Copenhagen, just before that big COVID crisis hit us, we did a global event where we broadcasted for 24 hours a day, catering to people around the world in all different time zones, having multiple co-locations of these events, both in Asia and in Stanford, California, and really, really building that community around the globe. So what are the three most important things I've learned over that all those years of experiences? Well, first of all, one thing, the term hybrid we should get rid of. It's a production term. In an audience perception, they either attend a physical in-person event or a virtual online event. This red line in the middle is something you should really be aware of about because it means you are actually designing and organizing two different events in parallel because there's two different audiences with different backgrounds, different needs, different motivations, different things that they appreciate. And based on that, you need to create two different content streams. And I don't agree you should give online delegates a break because they are in the comfort of their home or office so they can walk the dog or go for a coffee anytime they like. Different content for different audiences means you have to have different promotional strategies, different timing, different messaging. Huh, that's a lot of work, yes indeed. And most often you don't have double the time, the money or the team resources with you. So if you have been involved in hybrid events and think, oh, hybrid events are a lot of work, it's true, be aware of that. At the end of this talk, I'll let you know how you earn that back. Tip number two, closely related to that and to my profession, to cater to the two different audiences, you need at least two different moderators, MC, hosts, regardless what you call them, 
one for the physical audience and one for the online audience. And then in a perfect world, these two cooperate where the online MC then represents the virtual audience to the physical world and vice versa. Third tip, talked about ROI, return on investment. You should start to think about repurposing your content as early as possible, because let's face it, in a hybrid event, a lot of stuff is recorded, a lot of questions or content is being submitted by your community, and these should really be the building blocks of whatever you're gonna do afterwards. So the sooner you start thinking about that, the smarter you can then build that into your design and make sure you really capture the value of the potential of a hybrid event. Now, finally, most important thing to remember, not only my red shoes, but also now the big red line between the physical and the online world. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I would love to answer them for you.